Light of the Concords is now on Stitcher Premium. Hear all six episodes of the original BBC radio series that inspired their hit HBO show. This Laugh Out Loud series is available exclusively on Stitcher Premium in the U.S. A must-listen for all Flight of the Concord fans and, dare I say, all comedy fans. Start listening now with a one-month free trial of Stitcher Premium. Go to stitcherpremium.com slash BBC and use promo code SPONT, S-P-O-N-T, at checkout to get your free month. That's stitcherpremium.com slash BBC, promo code S-P-O-N-T. Welcome! Ah! You thought I wasn't here. You thought this was an episode where you could do whatever you wanted. Because I didn't show up. Surprise! The spice of life. That's right. Used to be variety was the spice of life. But that's not what people like. People don't... People... It's better you hear this from me. People like things to be the same. They just want to have their routines... People don't like different stuff. That's why all of us eat the same thing for every meal all the time. (laughs) Right? We all eat cinnamon raisin oatmeal in the morning. We have sloppy joes for lunch. And we have a full Thanksgiving dinner every single day. All of us. Uh, uh, Hold on. I'm being informed this is maybe not true for everyone. (laughs) And that everyone I know has been humoring me for my entire life. How sharper than a serpent's tooth to have been duped into feeling that you were normal when you are, frankly, an abject freak. (laughs) Do you know how sleepy I get after dinner? So sleepy every single night. I go to bed at 7 p.m. But then I'm up bright and early, 11 a.m. the next day. Attacking that oatmeal. You know, folks, we're none of us getting any younger, except for Benjamin Button. And I think he's done, right? <laughs> Is he, he's, he's a baby now? Last I checked, I've never seen that movie. What a great thing to reference a movie you've never, ever seen. Um, I So I have to lower my cholesterol, right? This is what my so-called doctor tells me. And frankly, I've been told this for many years. The <laughs> doctor's always like, maybe you can lower yourself with diet and exercise before you have to prescribe anything. And I say, great plan. It doesn't do any good. I've been to five doctors now. So I thought, well, maybe I'll start eating Cheerios. Because there was a campaign for a while where Cheerios are like, hey, it would kill you not to eat these. And I couldn't bring myself to do it because I'm an adult. So I started eating oatmeal. What is this, Charles Dickens times? God damn, I tried every kind. There's no making it good. Because at one point, I just become conscious of it, of the texture, of the way it looks. How did anyone ever get past the way it looked? I gave up and now I am eating cold cereal Kashi they have a lot of flavors I'm sure it's just like eating candy I'm not doing anything to help myself out almond milk though Mm. but I'm ready to give up guys ready to give up just go back to eating a dozen eggs every single day (laughs) in a glass it's the most nutritious way. I learned that from our friend, Rocky Balboa. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest onto the program to have a free-form conversation with me, inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest. Then I invite some improviser pals onto the show to join me for a narrative improv that is one continuous story as opposed to unconnected scenes which begins with a location provided by you, the listener? 
More on that later. And it is all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. That's what he goes like. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, forgive me. Ladies <laughs> I had to move a microphone stand out of the way because it was becoming that scene from Big Night. Good movie. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Remember this reference. Pause right now. Immediately watch Big Night. Welcome back. Pretty good, right? My guest today is an hilarious stand-up comedian and television writer. One of my favorite Twitterers as well. It is my pleasure to have on our program, Marcella Arguello. Oh my God. Thank you so much. Mar- thank you. <laughs> no, hold the, thank you. Hold the applause. Thank you so much. There's a studio audience behind a two-way mirror. They're golf clapping. They're golf clapping. Yeah. Well, they're golf people. They are golf people. Do you like to golf? No. And I wish they weren't so ugly. Have you... <laughs> Look, we all wish golf people weren't so ugly. But that's what do you think drives them to golf? The ugliness? Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm, at least I know I'm golf attractive. Marcel, I have a question. God, you are golf attractive. <laughs> oh, I was being a hypothetical person. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> was a hypothetical response. Ooh. Marcel, I have a question for yes, you. Yes, I have an answer. From our, I hope so. This comes to us from our previous episode's guest, Mark Evan Jackson. Mark asks you, which job from earlier in your life would you like to do again, and what would it have to pay? What? (laughs) (laughs) What? The worst question. Why is it the worst question? I don't think I would do any of those jobs again. That's why it's tough. Yeah. Wait, I have to have to go down the line. I was a library page. That was my first job, filing books. Mm-hmm. I'd never want to do that again. Did you have to learn the Dewey Decimal System? Um, did we? <laughs> did you have to learn either. of it? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Something to do with condensation? <laughs> um, <laughs> it know. measures condensation yeah. in tens. That's that's how I learned it. <laughs> I don't think we had to learn how. To, I don't believe we did, but that paid great. Did it really? Yeah, it did. Where was this? In Modesto, California, mm-hmm. downtown Modesto. Worked at the library there. My whole, like, my sister worked there. She got me a job. My brother got a job there. My mom got a job there. It was the best. Were you all there at the same time? Yes. It was amazing. <laughs> we love spending time with each other. People think <laughs> God, I'm kidding, so. but we do. <laughs> what was my next job? I was a car hop at Sonic Drive-In. I was, oh my God, I was like really? seven foot in heels. That paid terrible. I wouldn't do that again. Oh, so you didn't have to, they don't, they didn't do like roller skates. I like did. I was in roller skates. Holy shit. Yeah. I was seven feet in those skates. Dropping food left and right. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been to Sonic. They have 44 ounce drinks. Ugh. I one time was taking two of them to a customer and I dropped them all over me. Whoa, yes. <laughs> it was really bad. Worked at Forever 21 for three months and I was like, fuck you. <laughs> um, I wouldn't do any of those jobs. Again. I wouldn't do any job again. Well, in order for you to do one again, like it, it was the library page the best one out of all of them? No. I don't know. What are, how, how are any of them the best? They're all get by jobs. Well, it's the lesser of many evils. Oh, God. You white people love talking about the lesser of many evils. <laughs> we really do. Just can't move on. You can't move forward. Um, it's fun. It's like brackets. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. Okay. Now I see. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> then you pit the two least mm-hmm. evil things against each other and see who wins. I love a bracket. I love a bracket. <laughs> uh, wait, where are my other jobs? I'm trying to go. Oh, I, I guess I started working as a bank teller. I was a bank manager quickly after that. What, a bank manager? Assistant manager. I was the assistant manager. Still? I, yeah, I was great. I was a 24-year-old bank manager. <laughs> I was working. In tr- I was It was in charge of millions of dollars. <laughs> It was awful. What were your duties as an assistant bank manager? Because it does seem like uh, to give someone, it seems like, it sounds like a position of great responsibility for a young person. It was, but um, I'm a very responsible person, period. Of course, of course. Okay, Paul? Of course. I don't like the implications and the tone (laughs) that you took when you you said that. It's just my voice. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, Yeah, I I had like five tellers to look over. 
I was like always approving transactions. I was also like, I was also like. This sounds like someone pretending to work at a bank. <laughs> I also was like, try to get my tellers to admit they were racist. <laughs> That was, was that? my favorite because sure. that happens in a bank. You know, people people are profiling and are getting profiled. They know when mm. they're getting profiled. And uh, my tellers would, uh, they would, I would be like, so why do you think that this check isn't real? He's never been here before. I've seen him before. <laughs> so what is it? It's just like his, his outfit. I was like, but yeah, well, what about his outfit that makes you suspicious? Like I would just... Pull for it and pull for it, even though I was like ready to just approve because I could just approve right yeah. then and there. But I'm an asshole, so I just kept going for it. Um, they never, of course, they never said why, but um, that was kind of fun working there. Uh, <laughs> that was kind of fun doing that job. I used to, I used to do the ATM machine. I would slip twenties in my pocket. What? <laughs> what are you? Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> Follow me on Twitter, bitch. What, what does that mean? Used We're to, not talking about it anymore. I don't need do any ah, former bank ah, person who's a pile of Tompkins fans being ah, like, wait a minute, didn't she work in my branch? <laughs> I'm just going to breeze right over that. Um, and uh, yeah, so when then when, what did I do after that? And then I became, I think I was a busboy for a while. I loved that job. Did you really? Where I was that? I loved being a bus uh, Over at LACMA. Uh-huh. The Raisin Stark Bar inside of LACMA. What was so great about it? I didn't have to talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. I had no responsibility. I mean, you know, cleaning up. I like cleaning. I'm Latina, guys. I'm a stereotype. <laughs> am I right? Um, but no, it was fun. I liked I liked uh, just clearing tables and making money and being on my feet. Right. And not, it was talking like, and not talking to anybody. It was brainless. I loved it. But it took, you know, if you want to be good... You know, you do put some thought and concern. I'm a very thoughtful person, except when I'm stealing money from banks. But um, I... Uh, well, your mind is otherwise occupied. Otherwise, I'm fine. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, I mean, I would I would be a busboy again for, yeah, I guess if it paid a little bit better. Right. But I, I liked that job. I love that job. Now, what was your last job before you were doing show business full time? Yeah, I was, I was a busboy. That was the last one? Yeah, that was the last one. And then... Uh, and I actually left because my dad passed away, and then I had to be at home, and then stand-up took off, so it was fine. It all worked out. I'm glad to hear that. Me too. <laughs> what when you were when you were a busboy at LACMA? Mm -hmm. How busy would it get there? Because Crazy this is busy. This, this is like so. LACMA, I think, has they have like a full blown. Do they have like a full blown restaurant and a cafe? Mm -hmm. And was this the restaurant? Yeah, it was. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's all this. Oh yeah, the cafe. Oh yes, I forgot about the cafe. That's separate. You're right. They have the restaurant with the bar, and then the cafe is on the other side. Yeah. So there, I would work in the restaurant, and um, but the cool thing was, you know, Nico Santos from NBC yes. Superstore. Yes, yes, yes. He um, he got a hosting job there first, mm -hmm. and then he got me hired. And then we brought in all like Solomon Giorgio, Frankie Quinones. Um, I forget who else worked there, but a bunch of us were. It was like the family at the fucking library. Was, <laughs> we brought the whole family in. We took over, <laughs> and it was great. So that was a really fun job. These are all uh, Marcelo just named a bunch of uh, great comedians yeah. <laughs> living here in Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, when you worked at the library, who was the first in your family to get hired? My sister. Okay. My sister. And then the you. First one. I want to say maybe my brother and then me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was, about the same, it was about the same time. I think my mom was hired last. Um, she had to go through the process because she had an accent. No, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. It's Modesto. It's kind of believable. Just something about her. I don't know. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's her outfit. <laughs> Never seen her here before. It's so weird. <laughs> she just seems kind of out of place. What, did everyone have the same job at the library? Or did everyone have Yeah, we were jobs? all pages. Yeah. It was great. It was so fun. I love my family. <laughs> Such a loser. So, have you found? Have you and your family always been super tight? Yeah, we always. Yeah, because we the there was four siblings total, and uh, we all about about a year apart. Okay. So my parents were fucking like crazy, <laughs> and uh, so it was two boys, two girls, and so we always paired off. You know, boy, boys versus girls always. Right. And then uh, yeah, so we were all very close. Were you guys competitive when you were kids? I don't think so. I just needed a lot of attention, but I don't think we were competitive. In a, in a boys versus girls area? Was that was there any of that going on? I mean, yeah, definitely boys versus girls. But then um, 
I was always like the nerdiest of the of the crew, so eventually everybody turned on me. But I was also very obnoxious. If you could, you could probably pick that up. It's weird for nerds to be obnoxious, but um, how were you? Um, how were you nerdy? I was just an awkward girl. I think that's you know, and I had my like I was obsessed with Michael Jackson, which none of my siblings got. They understood, but I was obsessed with him. I was just we were just we all had our little obsessions. And I think mine was the least relatable to them because I was also, like I said, very annoying and loud and needed a lot of attention. And it was just awkward with my big, dumb, curly hair, my glasses, and my bones just sticking out everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I was also, like, real lazy, and I, I wasn't athletic, but my siblings all – not that they were athletic, but they liked being active. And I was just like, well, for what? Can't we just sit here? Like playing outside was not for you. I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it. I mean, we did it because I had to, peer pressure. If your obsession was Michael Jackson, what were they obsessed with? <clears throat> oh, uh, God, who knows? Who cares? Why? They're not here, Let, Paul. Let's, let's pretend that I care <laughs> and that we're recording this for an audience. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, I don't remember. Everybody had their thing. My, my, I mean, God, that's the thing I can't remember. Wait, I, listen, they were rude to me. I was rude to them too, Paul, okay? I they could be were, a bully too. They were rude to they me. They were rude to me. <laughs> they bullied me. Did they bully you? I, well, kind of, yeah. But then it, I, listen, I internalized it, went to school and bullied other kids. That is the <laughs> nature of the beast. That's right. How did the bullying manifest itself? Um, I, was it I just mean, like, was it mostly just teasing or was it? Yeah, 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 it was definitely teasing. And I was, you know, the youngest. So that's always, you know, that's always trouble. Um, so yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's all. I was also just a weirdo and I, I was a crybaby. I'm still a crybaby. I'm not going to pretend like I'm not a crybaby now, but I was a crybaby when I was a kid. Just anything would set you off? Basically. And were things often, if I may, very unfair? I mean, in my eyes, they were. Yeah. I'm still a crybaby now. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, 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 I'm very emotional, Paul. Okay. This has already been a roller coaster, hasn't it? <laughs> You've learned so much. <laughs> Look, it's peaks and valleys. This is what life is. It is. I agree. Well, I, I'm glad we're in agreement on this. <laughs> <laughs> now, you are the baby of the family. Were you treated like the baby? I was treated like the by baby. By your parents? Um, wait a minute. When you say treated like the baby, you mean was I babied? Yes. <laughs> um, I mean, I want to say yes, but I kind of, I, I guess that's the thing when you go back to being competitive. I'm, I think I'm, because I'm so self-involved. I don't think I ever noticed that I was ever getting special treatment. The baby never does. I know. So in my opinion, I wasn't babied, but I'm sure <laughs> right. if you ask them. They would say otherwise. I, I think undoubtedly they would. I, yeah. I am number five out of six. Oof. And so You're it was long forgotten. Absolutely. The novelty had worn off. <laughs> and then when my little brother came along, I think it was the idea of we know this is the last one. And let's really let's really enjoy this one. Right. <laughs> no, let, let's savor it. Yeah, let's savor it. <laughs> See, I feel like I wasn't, but um, which is why I needed so much attention. But it could be flipped. I don't know. I can't speak on that, Paul. <laughs> I can't speak on it. I don't think I was babied. Well, listen, you've been very candid up to this point, <laughs> which I greatly appreciate. Mm hmm Go on. Do you? How often do you see your family? As often as possible, but these writing jobs really make it hard. <laughs> TV you're, writing are you, you're, stinks. You're writing on a couple things right now? No, I was writing on Drop the Mic, um, which uh, comes out on TVS in the fall. I hated it, um, so I got out of that contract. <laughs> Uh, and I'm at Bill Nye Saves the World now, and I love it, but I also don't want to go back because TV writing is its own special beast, and um, I am a stand-up comedian, mm -hmm. and I like doing stand-up comedy, mm -hmm. and I like touring, and I like the show to be about Marcella Arguello. Marcella, guess what? I totally relate to that mm, yeah. uh, because I was a TV writer very briefly, and I realized that... I was in a very good situation, and if I wasn't enjoying it 1,000% in this situation, I probably wasn't enjoying it. Right, right. Sometimes you got to be out in front. I mean, I always got to be out in front. Yeah. Look at me. Why not? Sometimes means all the time. Yeah, always. I like being out in front. Speaking of which, where can people see you? This will be coming out at the end of this month. Uh, well, go to MarcellaComedy.com. 
Um, two L's, MarseilleComedy.com. Um, I I am all over the place. I'm. You said the end of this month, right? Yes, this month being July. Um, yeah, in August and September, I will be in Austin for the Out of Bounds Festival. I will be at the 208 Festival in Boise, Idaho, and I will be at the High Plains Comedy Festival in Denver. So those are some places, and then I will be all over the place because I like touring. So so check out MarcellaComedy.com, yeah. and you'll find out when Marcella's coming to a town near you. That's it. And don't ask her when she's coming to your specific town because if she's not. Yeah. I really hate I always I also appreciate when someone is like, When are you coming to said town? And I was just there the day before. It's my favorite. My it absolute never favorite. Never gets old. I had a guy run into me, was stopping on the street in Brooklyn and say, I'm your biggest fan. What are you doing here? And I was like, I just did a show last night. <laughs> <laughs> biggest fan. <laughs> All right. But this isn't about me. This is about Marcella. Marcella, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Where can people find you online should they wish to find you and should you wish to be found? At MarcellaComedy.com. Find me. That's all my Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, website. All that BS is Marcella Comedy. There you go. Guys, you can't say you haven't been told. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we will meet our friends from the world of Make Pretends. But you, for now, you better listen to this ad. Blue, 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 blue apron. Blue apron. Blue apron is the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country. Sorry, Mike's food delivery. You stink. For less than $10 a meal, they deliver seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients right to your door. Blue Apron is completely flexible. You can customize your recipes each week. You can choose a delivery option that fits your needs. You needy, you needy little creep. Blue Apron loves you. I don't. And Blue Apron's freshness guarantee promises that every ingredient arrives ready to cook or they will make it right. Some of the meals available in August include, here we go, drum roll. Hello? No? Why did you bother coming here? Some of the meals available in August include basil pesto chicken with summer vegetable panzanella. I've never heard that before. It sounds delicious. Sauteed shrimp and green beans with globe tomatoes, spinach, and orzo pasta. Enjoy, Atlas. Whole grain pasta and summer vegetables with heirloom tomato caprese salad. Miso butter salmon and lo mein noodles with cucumber and charmed tomatoes. Charmed tomatoes! How many tomatoes are there? Uh, who's been keeping charmed tomatoes from me? I would be eating those every day. And meatball pizza with fresh mozzarella cheese and charmed tomatoes again. God. If I find out, if I find out that charmed tomatoes were around sooner than this afternoon, I will be furious. Call to action. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free. That's a day of food. <laughs> With free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash PFT, my initials. You will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash PFT. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. If you are attending the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in Edinburgh, Scotland next month, I would like to tell you about a brand new play that I think you simply must see. From Black Rocking Chair Productions and critically acclaimed playwright Julie Shavers comes the brand new black comedy, Mary Go Nowhere. The new comedy satirizes the extreme competition and achievement-obsessed culture of Los Angeles. La La Land isn't all sunshine and rainbows. It's surveillance by the neighbors, the police, and the PTA. Mary Go Nowhere is an absurdist take on trying to get by as a parent in LA where if the droughts, fires, and earthquakes don't get you, your fellow parents will. Now, I saw this play... Recently, because my wife is in it. That's right. Janie Haddad Tompkins is in this play. It's really hilarious. I urge you to see it. You don't have to know a ton about Los Angeles to get it. Even if you're outside of Los Angeles, you will get these types, this kind of thing that's pervading our society. Even yours, Scotland, I'll bet. Um, it's got a lot of great comedic actors in it. It's really, really funny. I laughed all the way through this thing. Please do check it out. August 3rd through the 28th at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Go to edfringe.com for details. Go see my wife in a play. Ah, 
What an ad. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. It is time to meet our improvisers. They're all here. I'm looking at them one by one. Now going back around. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to welcome all three of these gentlemen to the show. When I put out the call for dates, had a new round of booking dates, all three of these guys said, hey, we're individually, they said this, they didn't gang up on me. They said individually, I just got a job. Uh, if you ever do a weekend recording, let me know. And then I called their bluffs. <laughs> <laughs> now they're all here at the same time. That's right. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, sitting right next to me. Please welcome back to the show, Sean Distance. Hello, hello. I'll clap for myself. <laughs> Boo. Oh, no. Boo. I like this. People so are we'll divided. Get heckled. I'll get heckled. <laughs> I'm in the middle. <laughs> He's fine. Yeah, yeah. Sean, how are you? I'm doing good. How well, are you, Paul? I'm good. Welcome back to the show. I'm doing great. Can you tell us what you're working on? <laughs> right now, I'm working on the show Superstore for NBC. There we go. That's this is a I'm network doing. situation. So, yeah, comedy. I can't be taken off to do some podcasts on a <laughs> oh, Wednesday. Oh, okay, okay. You know what I mean, Paul? Damn. Oh, hey, oh, all right. I'm just kidding. I'm really glad oh. this worked out. This is great. It is great, right? This We're is, having fun already. I'm having fun. This is great. Now, Sean, previously, yes, you'd worked on Playing House. Yes. For T USA. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. USA. Check that out on <laughs> digital streaming right now. All episodes up online. There we go. Wonderful season. It's a wonderful... And do you make any cameos on these shows? I don't make any cameos in Playing House. I... I do make a cameo in Wrecked, which I did work on. That's also. another show. Make the cameo in Wrecked, and um, yeah, right now there's like a meme of me reenacting Game of Thrones because Game of Thrones is premiering this weekend uh, to date the podcast. Sorry, but um, so that's going around. I'm very proud of it because it's accurate to the show. Like the jokes are actually accurate. It's like a montage of me doing it, and I'm going through all the like Facebook posts of it to see when people are like really funny, but you know what? Also accurate. And I'm like, yes, a secret. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Like, about. So you're, you're, you're. It's you're, like a montage of me on an island describing Game of Thrones to people who didn't see it. So I'm like pretending to be a dragon, and I'm <laughs> and it's, and I was on set being like, it has to kind. Of, we have to make sure it's <laughs> good with the show. I didn't want it to be not. I'm a real freak. That's if it's worth thing. doing, it's worth it's doing. Exactly, right. exactly. And I'm, I'm reveling in everyone noticing the detail that it took to. No, yeah. These other shows. Like when you're around the writer's room, mm -hmm. how come they're not saying, this Sean is hilarious. Why don't we put him in a cameo in the show? You know, great question. Just great putting question. it out there. <laughs> Sean, I'm going to turn away from you and look right across the table. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh -oh. Uh, this gentleman, that, yeah, you're, <laughs> it's time. <laughs> <laughs> this gentleman, so happy to have him back on the show, Zeke Nicholson. What up, what up? Zeke, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy to be here. I'm uh, happy to have you here. Yeah, I've been out of these podcast streets for a couple weeks you now, <laughs> and uh, feels good to be back in the cut, you know what I'm saying? You squeak back into <laughs> the cut. Hey, you listen to me on other shit. Maybe I oh do. My gosh, Maybe I'm so I do. flattered. Now, the last um, time I saw you, Zeke, uh, we were both on the set of Take My Wife, yeah, season two. Yeah, we sure two. were. Yeah, friends, uh, Cameron Esposito and Rhea Butcher. Yep. Now, what are you... I didn't even ask. What are you working on? Yeah, so I am also writing on a network situation comedy called oh, AP Bio, uh, also on NBC. Advanced Placement Biology. Correct. Ah, I'm yeah. a detective. Well done. <laughs> well done. This is now. This seems to be a brand new show. It is nothing against Superstore, but hey, it's been we, around. That's been around. Old. Yeah, at this it's point. old. <laughs> It's old news. Yeah. Let's hear about this fresh new show. Ooh, fresh new show. Um, it stars Glenn Howerton from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. He, so he's not doing It's Always Sunny anymore. He, I guess, is now recurring on that from time to time, but is this is his new project. Okay, so podcast. he's like, not enough about me on It's Always Sunny. Right. Need to have Needed more. more of me mm -hmm. and yeah. with network money. <laughs> uh huh. Right. Yes. Exactly. So he's the guy. Uh, Patton Oswald as well. Right. Got, uh, no stranger to network television. No, certainly not. Spence on. King of Queens. Yeah, correct. <laughs> Classic. Keep going. <laughs> uh, uh, justified. That's right. Uh, Not... Well, that's cable. That's cable. <laughs> so, so your list was correct of one. Uh, was, <laughs> he was a recurring character on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Ooh. There we go. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Network. Right. That's as network as it gets. <laughs> yeah. Hour long? Yeah. Forget about it. Forget about it. Uh, multiple about characters. About played yeah. multiple characters. He played, he played multiple twins. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, this is Zeke's time. Sorry. Is it, sorry. Wow. I just, we had to be accurate. That was my, th you know, we got to right. be accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who 
Who else is on the show? Pat Oswalt, uh, Clint Howerton. Yeah. The end? Uh, Lyric Lewis, Mary Song, some fun Second City improvisers that, uh, yeah. And then they're recasting a part right now. Vanessa Bayer was in the pilot and oh. is no longer. Spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> she went back to SNL. <laughs> she got a movie deal, I think. So. <laughs> She's fine. Um, Michael Bryan is the creator, of SNL, longtime SNL sure, writer. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's been really fun. Now, the big question. Yeah. Any cameo? I mean, by listen, <laughs> you know, y'all were talking about really sitting on your hands, going behind the camera, and I'm having trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it's great. I've really, I have learned a lot, and I really like it. But oh boy, you is this know. your is this your first writing job? Uh huh. Yeah, I think that's part of it. It's like mm -hmm. it's hard to unwire your brain when you're so used to like that whole grind of like yes. yeah, it's a big adjustment. And all that stuff. Yeah. Well, and especially when you are in charge of what you think is funny, totally. and then when you uh, you're like, here's here's the funny thing I wrote, and people are like, yeah, I think it should be different. Yeah. And in your mind, you're like, what the fuck do you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not like the most proprietary. I don't really give a shit about. I'm like, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> my idea is probably better, but it's also like, I don't know. I'm an improv person. Like, writing's a fucking sham, right? <laughs> uh oh, writing's I'm gonna get fired. Uh oh, <laughs> like, it's, uh, I don't know. Um, hello, NBC. Can I have Brandon Tartikoff? <laughs> Brandon Tartikoff. <laughs> Uh, oh, my AP bio friends, if you're Zeke. listening, I'm kidding. I love working I'm with you. Zeke, I'm sorry. When I hear an ancient reference like that, I have to jump over right away. <laughs> God damn it. Zeke, I'm looking next to you, Can right you across the table from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so we got uh, ATM. Uh, we got to edit that out. <laughs> we got to edit Zeke's entire interview. Yeah. <laughs> Sitting right across from me, what a pleasure to have him back as well, Carl Tart. Turn is your here. radio down. <laughs> Turn your radio down. <laughs> Carl's signature catchphrase. Yeah, Turn, catch Turn, Turn, Turn your radio down. That I stole uh, <laughs> every '80s and '90s radio. Hey, Turn your radio down. <laughs> Get back in the morning, block party. Q93. <laughs> Carl, what's up? Welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me back. Now, what are you working on? You know what? I'm working on a new show as well mm -hmm. on uh, the Fox Network because fuck NBC. Oh, no. oh, oh, hold on. Hold, hold on. on. There, this is beef up in here. Oh, okay. Fox hold Gang. On. Ooh, network Fox beef. Gang. Network beef. Fox Gang. <laughs> uh, I'm working on a new show called Ghosted, which stars oh, sure. Adam Scott mm -hmm. and Craig, Craig Robinson. Robinson. Yes, yes. And... Uh, it's fun, man. It's about it. it's a show based on uh, girls that I hook up with, and then they don't text me back. Ever. Oh, what, Carl? I'm just kidding. It's about <laughs> ghosts and aliens and the supernatural. <laughs> it's like a comedic X Files, if you will. It's a comedic X Files kind of, yeah. Now, Carl, I have to ask you. Please do. The, one of the roles I'm very interested in. There's a guy playing. Uh, I think it was, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. There's a scientist character on the show, mm -hmm. right? Barry. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Who's playing that role? Uh, his name is Doo, Technical Difficulties. <laughs> uh, I can't. I can't. Remember. Are you asking because you auditioned for that part, Paul? We, we all auditioned. Literally, for everyone. Part. Literally, <laughs> everyone did. We all did. I passed on the way back from that audition. I passed because <laughs> that audition, you had to park. 15 minutes away so from crazy. the network, and then you had to walk. I got hot. so lost. <laughs> I was like 30 minutes late. Fox and then gang. it was like, I was yeah, and you had to go through some back entrance. <laughs> I Fox it. gang, Fox gang. Oh. <laughs> so you have to walk all this way. And then on the way back, I ran into five guys that I knew. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> they were all, all, all different, for the same different types. They all different no, types. The, oh, yeah. The breakdown was funny, man. Yeah. And <laughs> Could be anywhere from 12 years old to <laughs> 60. And also, the audition was so loose, we got to improvise. I was like, yeah. man, I did good in that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought I killed. Yeah. <laughs> and then this dude, guys, who is he's very funny. I'm and, sure he is. Uh, editing his name. Like, <laughs> sure. <laughs> let's leave a space. His name Chris is... Absolutely. <laughs> uh, but, edit out my um, part and edit in his name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's great. it's great. Now, Carl, I gotta ask, you're on the hot seat. Uh huh. You're a funny guy. You're there in the writer's room. <laughs> Is anyone saying we gotta give Carl a cameo? Honestly, Paul, Paul I just care about the comedy of it. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, Paul, I just care about the comedy of it. I don't. <laughs> 
and no, no matter what capacity, no matter what capacity, I'm I'm bringing joy to people's lives. Yeah, that's all I care. You about. You like being part honestly. of a team. Yeah, I yeah. like being part Socks of a team. Out of here, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I yeah, um, I'm having a great time. Also, I don't know if writers can do cameos on Fox shows anymore because. Fellow Earwolf <laughs> podcast man Sean Clements, yeah. like, was on a bunch of shows. <laughs> was he on a bunch of the shows that he was yeah, a writer on? Yeah, not to blow up his spot, but I think literally he was the cause of them changing that rule. Yeah, <laughs> they made it a rule. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Okay, that's I wish, crazy. I God damn! I wish we had time to talk about this. This is something I, I look forward to investigating. I, go I am going to investigate this, ladies and gentlemen. We have to take a break. During the break, we will select our location for our improv from Twitter. That's right. If you would like to submit a location for our improv. We usually record on Wednesdays, although today is a Saturday. So what you do is you wait for the prompt. We will let you know when we're recording. When you see the prompt, you'll have five minutes to give us a location for our improv. And if your location is picked, we'll say your name on the thing. That's about it, guys. All right. Here's another ad for you to enjoy and not fast forward through. Hey, pals. Earwolf has a brand new show for you. It's available now, and I think you're really going to love it. Jessica McKenna and Zach Reno are two of the funniest people out there, and they are also two of the most musical. Together, they have made Off Book the Improvised Musical Podcast. Each episode, Jessica and Zach are joined by a hilarious improviser, and together, along with a live piano, they make a new musical on the spot. I got to do the first episode. I didn't even know it was going to be the first episode at the time. They tricked me. And it was so much fun. These guys, they're so good. It's, it's mind-blowing. And here's the thing. You don't have to like musicals to listen to this. You can not like musicals. You can hate them, and you will enjoy this show. You can like musicals, and you will enjoy this show. I had the best time trying to keep up with them. They're really geniuses of this form. First episode was so much fun. People are really enjoying it. Second episode, Mary Holland is the guest? Come on. I know they just recorded a live one. With Paul Shear and Darcy Carden. So these guys, they're getting the best people, including me. <laughs> and they are just amazing. So you're really, really going to like it. It's so much fun. It is pure, unadulterated musical joy in a podcast. Subscribe to Off Book from Earwolf in Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Oh, I didn't see you there. Because uh, we're all black people. <laughs> Zeke! Wow! Sorry. Zeke! Wow! The very, very idea. dark in here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I feel like I'm really crossing lines here today. Uh, left <laughs> Everybody's that kind of show. I guess so. Priscilla, she likes her family, and that's it. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We are ready to begin our improv because we have our location. That's right. If you want to submit a location for our improv, follow Spontanea Nation on Twitter. It is the same spelling as the show that you're listening to currently. Look at your phone. And we'll send out the prompt. And then you give us your suggestions. One per customer per recording. Some guy, get a load of this guy. I'm going to read his name. Scott Jerkowski. Oh, this shit. guy did a, did a, he wrote a note <laughs> with like two dozen suggestions, screen capped it and sent it to me with the, with the caption, boom. <laughs> <laughs> well, boom to you, Scott Jerkowski. He's got jerk right in the name. Man. Right. Come on, man. Should have seen on. it coming. Come, come on, on, man. Come on, come man. On, man. Turn your radio on. Turn down. your radio on. <laughs> <laughs> it's the perfect catchphrase. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> Turn your radio down. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to reveal our location. But first, just so as you know. Oh, this guy? Mm, the guy I picked, he submitted two. That's against the rules. What do we do now? We got to pick another one. We got to pick another one. Got to, Paul. All right. But first, you need to know this. In order to aid us in our storytelling, we use three sound effects 
that move us about in space and time. Let's say someone is having a memory. We need to go into the past for some reason, learn how something came to be. You'll hear this flash back sound effect. There we go, into the past. Let's say we want to return from a flashback to the present day or go into the future for some reason. You'll hear this flash forward sound effect. The present or the future. Let's say we're in a scene where we want to find out what's happening at the exact same time. We're moving neither forward nor backward in time. We're moving sideways in space. We'll use this meanwhile button. Whoosh. We're over there. No time has passed. Past. Present. Future. Everyone gets it. Mm-hmm. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to reveal our new location. <laughs> Provided by a rules follower. And that location is... <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> Don't worry. Jerkowski's sitting at home. It's like, oh, He's guy. like, boom, I dropped it. Come on, dude. He <laughs> ruined it for everyone. I gave you 12. Jerkowski. That location is... You know what? This one comes up a lot for some reason. <laughs> We're going to go with it today. It. This comes to us from Rachel. <laughs> Hi, Rach. Thanks, Rachel. Rachel Bousset. B-O-U-I-S-S-E-Y. Ra- Rachel Bousset. B-O-U-I-S-S-E-Y. Bousset. Boucher. 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 I don't know. Boise. Bousso. I have no guesses on this. Rachel, send us a phonetic no. spelling. Yeah, please. Send no us guesses. Phonetic. Okay, Boisson. There we go. <laughs> Bousset. But yeah, Rachel, we do need that phonetic pronunciation <laughs> pretty quick. Here we go. Rachel's suggestion is, and she added the <laughs> emoji, the emoticon with the eyes, with the laughing mouth. <laughs> Antarctic Research Station. Mm. Antarctic Research Station. We take you now. I've not been timing this, by the way. <laughs> Antarctic Research Station. Is it cold? Yeah, it's getting cold. I mean, it is cold in here. Yeah. It's supposed to be heated up inside the facility, but... I just assumed it would be. I thought, yeah, you know, it's been a few months. Maybe the heater's on the fritz or something. I don't know. Oh, so you don't know either. You're also new? No, yeah, I'm pretty new. They just flew me in on the one flight a year. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 I'd live nearby, so... I could tell you what's going on. Step out of the oh. shadows. <clears throat> I could tell you what's going on. Okay. Who who are you? I'm Dr. Walrus. Dr. Walrus? Yeah. <laughs> like spelled the same as the animal? Nah. It's W A H H L R U S. Wow. And the phonetic spelling is walrus. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Here's what's going on. We here at the Antarctic Research Center. We keep a code so that you, my scientists, can be strong. Oh. Okay. I would like to hear about this code. I should point out, I am not a scientist. Yeah, no, I'm not a scientist. Either. Neither oh, y'all. you're not a scientist either? No, I'm a chef. Oh, wait a minute. All right. Are you also a... Yeah. I mean, I'm wearing chef's whites <laughs> and, a, and a chef hat. Oh, I thought maybe you're some sort of strange samurai or something. Because you had big knives. Like, I guess that's chef stuff, too. I didn't yeah, realize. You, I mean, you should we're, all, we're both dressed as chefs holding knives. We should have known that we were I thought you chefs. were going to a costume party. Well, no. There's no parties down here. We're chefs. We were sent here because the food was bad, apparently. And we're, oh, I guess. By the way, are there no parties here? <laughs> there are currently no parties here. No. Oh, currently no parties. Okay. You never know. Okay. You Maybe know. we might need two chefs. All right. Absolutely. <laughs> have no fear. <laughs> Chef Paul Prudhomme is here. Wait, Paul Prudhomme? Oh, my God. The TV's Wait, Paul Prudhomme? This is yes. wild. What? <laughs> Who are you two boys? I'm I'm Walter Scott. <laughs> Walter Scott? Walter Scott, the sort of chef from California. As I live and breathe. Walter I'm, Scott. I'm Justin, you are? I'm Justin Wilson. Justin Wilson. The, the cook and Cajun. I die and don't breathe. I bet. I bet y'all are wondering why three chefs ended up in the Antarctic together. Oh, yes, I am wondering that. Yeah, I am wondering, wondering as well. that as yeah. well. And I have the answer. <laughs> <laughs> this it has always been my dream to convert chefs into scientists. <laughs> really? <laughs> always been my dream. That's why I started this research facility. And... 
That's why I have maintained it, except for the heat. <laughs> yeah, what, what's going on with that? Yeah. Button? Like I said before, I need you to be strong so I keep it cold. Oh, to convert oh. us into scientists? <laughs> that is yeah. just, so are scientists generally strong due to like... No, they're not. Okay. What do you mean? <laughs> wait a second. Wait, wait till one got them in it right now. Wait till one minute. What do you mean? Convert us into scientists. I am Chef Paul Prudhomme of New Orleans. This is Chef Paul Prudhomme you're talking to. Hey, Paul. Hey, hey, hey. Paul. Hey, uh, so, uh, I got you some, uh, you know, I got you uh, a, a new job, you know, Paul. Oh, you got me a new job? Yeah, I got you a job. It's, you, are, um, you have been the best agent I have ever had. Well, I'm a good agent. I'm a Cajun agent. <laughs> <laughs> you have been the best... <laughs> You have been the best Cajun agent. I'm a good Cajun agent. Now, I said to you, now, it's a little bit different from the bayou now. What? It's a little bit different from the Say, bayou. Say, whoa. In the ways that there is always humid and hot down here. Oh, yeah, I love that weather. It, it's going to be a little different. What? <laughs> How much different from the humid weather? Oh, it's going to be a lot different, Paul. Oh. Well, I'll be. <laughs> I put some okra on that. Oh. Now, Paul, now, that's not a bad idea. Now, look, your TV career's kind of been tanking a little bit. What? I had my own show yeah, in the Yeah, but your ratings are not, they're not good. The reruns are no longer airing, Paul. Oh, now, no. I think if you go to Antarctica. Antarctica? That's where it is. Where the fish bring, is bring. Bring. Oh, hold on. Let me get this phone. Oh, uh, Mr. Kelja, yeah, John. Yeah. We uh, got it. We got an alligator on line one. Okay, hold on. I, I, I told him not to call me at this time. No, yeah. Put it through. Put it through. All right, put it through. Put it through. Yeah, here talking about some too fit. All right, put it through. What kind of agent are you when I'm down here in the swamp? Nah, I told them. Okay. I'm trying to catch a puzzle. Okay, now, now, alligator, I told you. I tried to get you a job. I tried to get you work. How come you didn't give me a cameo in Trumbe? <laughs> It's hard because they they never really needed an alligator in Trobe. It's kind of a... I'm sorry to interrupt. We got a crawfish on line two. <laughs> now, now, he should be on set. Why is he not... I why is know. he not... A, okay, put him through. He must be having some problems. Put him through. <laughs> All right, now, I will talk to I'm them about... I'm sorry to interrupt. We got a witch doctor on line three. <laughs> I am busy as hell today, Paul. Can you just go to Antarctica and just, yeah, just take care of the show. <laughs> and so he had got all in phone calls and he couldn't really talk to me about what I was going to do here. But now I done showed up and it's two other chefs in the same place. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. Well, look. Go Tigers, go Saints. <laughs> 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 well, look, me, uh, I'm Dr. Walrus, as I said before. and That's uh, right. How's it spelled again? W-A-H-H-H-L-R-U-S. Wow. We got tree edges. Tree edges. Tree edges. Yeah. And look, it's always been my dream, as I said, to convert chefs into scientists. So I say we start right now. Oh. If you open up the box that's in front of you, you yeah. will All see right. okay. it contains some cooking equipment and All a right. child's science set. Okay, there's beakers and thermometers. There's a pan. There's a right. pan. So yeah, I want bullshit. you to use your cooking skills to make hydroclonic acid. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hydroclonic acid, I'm not sure even how. Why would I cook that? That seems... I'm not also sure. That's a thing. That I, that's a thing. I don't think it is either. I'm, I mean, I'm not a scientist. It's I'm a not combination chef. between hydrochloric acid and hydroponic plants. Hydroclonic acid. No, that's... That's okay. But I, the point is, you could, I'm Mr. Miyagi and you. You could do more than you know. Use your cooking skills to do science. Wait a second. Wait a second. You just wait one okra pick and make it. <laughs> now, now I need to know here now. I need to know. You got to explain to me exactly how you do this here. I don't cook nothing but southern cuisine. <laughs> Okay, you got that? It's true. He doesn't. You got he's that? Never, he's Paul he's, Prudhomme. He's, he's known cooks. for not refusing to cook anything else. That's now, right. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. <laughs> go Tiger, go Saint, go Pelicans. 13%. Yes, I'm a huge Pelicans <laughs> fan. We just got Rajon Rondo on okay. our team today. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, okay. Great point, God. Boom, boom, boom. Anyway. <laughs> Mr. President. Yes. The 
Well, sir, the data readings have stopped coming in from the Antarctica field station. Is that good? Uh, is that good? I don't know if that's good, sir. We need we require that data in order to be able to build the military base down there. So, um, you know, it's it was under your orders that we were going to expand the military in Antarctica. So Okay, I'm, I'm back from the bathroom. Wait a second. <laughs> Mike what are you doing in my seat? I, well, you were you weren't here, so. so you don't sit. You don't sit in my seat. I don't know why you. All right, I, why you even sitting? I in thought my seat. it was I would take over because you weren't here. I was in the bathroom. I had to take a number two. Oh, okay, <laughs> sir. That's. Go ahead, Mike. You can take this one. I don't care. I don't even want to. Right, I don't well, even want to. This is small. This is small. Hey, small. Dad. Hey, Dad. Can we kick this Mike guy out of here? He's not family. I, I only like working with family. Don Junior. I don't want to. <laughs> Kick him out. I don't like this Mike. He dad. has to be here. He's covering. No, it's I only like working with family. Okay. Daddy, family. I only like working with family. I get Family's, it, Dad. I get it. Family's I very important. It's Family's very, very important. Shut up, Mike. He's kids. right. My side is right. <laughs> Michael, please handle right, well, this. I, I hope you'll stay, Mr. President, and listen to what... I will. General I'll stay. I'll say. stay and I'll listen. Go ahead, General, please. What were you speak. saying? Yes. Uh, well, I was just saying that the, the field readings have stopped coming in from Antarctica, sir, and I'm just, I'm frankly, I'm worried about the station down there. I think we should maybe send a team to go do some recon. Hmm. Mm, recon. That's my, one of my favorite video games, Ghost Recon. <laughs> I love playing it. It's a great game. Sir, I, I don't think he means uh, Ghost Recon. What does he mean? Uh, he means that we would send a team to reconnoiter. Oh, my God, the area. Mike, get the f- Fuck, Daddy, get my guy he out of be here. here. Don, get him out. Don Jr., please. What? Right now, right now. Don, please. Please continue, General. Please God. tell us more about Ghost Recon. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, I believe it's a Tom Clancy property, uh, but I don't know much beyond that. I just know that, uh, yeah, I'm... Uh, Look, sir, we need to send a team down there, okay? That's all I got. Go. That's all I got. So we need to send a team to Antarctica. Correct, A yes. military team. Well, it could be a basketball team. <laughs> oh, all right. Do you know who's right nearby is the Washington Generals. <laughs> great. The, the Washington Generals. I love the Washington Generals. They're a great team. I think they're due. I think they're due. It's, it's about time they won a game. <laughs> all right, so I, I think I just made, quite honestly, I think I just made like a souffle. It's just a souffle. I use normal ingredients and I think it's good and I want you to try it. I'm not going to make hydroclonic acid. But is it a scientific souffle? I mean, technically cooking is science. That's right. That is right. Wait, you are in what? the lead. Was this a, what? This was like a fake out test? <laughs> oh I'm trying God, to that's... get you to see the seams beneath the stitches. I don't hate this. I don't hate this because I tried to get on uh, Top Chef and I did not get on it. And this is pretty close. I like a competition. I'm already winning, so. I'm going to go take funny. a dump. Okay. I'll be back later. Wait a second, Walrus. <laughs> you got to check in with everybody and see what everybody made. Okay. Yeah, come on. Yeah, so don't you go dump it <laughs> yeah, out yet. Oh, you, you keep that dump in your <laughs> trunk. Even in such a rude manner. You only <laughs> check one guy's results. Well, I'm sorry. I was going to give you, you know, it's time to settle so that I could taste yours with a fresh palate. But if you want me mixing flavors. No, you taste all of ours with a dumpy palate. <laughs> <laughs> Are you tasting this expecting it to be hydroclonic acid? Maybe. <laughs> This well, is really bizarre. I don't know how you're going to taste this because I made a pair of walkie-talkies. <laughs> wow. I used some, some <laughs> eggs and flour. It's like it started out being a cake, but then I added in some of the elements from the child's <laughs> science play set, and there you go. Voila. I don't know how functional they are. If you want to take this one and go over, stand uh, over there. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, let me walk this one down. <laughs> All right. Shh. Walrus to base. Oh, I can hear you. Uh, I can oh. actually hear you. Wow. Mm, and it tastes good. <laughs> Thank too. you. Thank you. You know what? This souffle is suddenly less impressive. Mother. Oh, my. Okay. All right. All what right. do you got? All right. I'm so glad you asked. So <laughs> I went down and I got a penguin. And I came back up. Wow. <laughs> and I took all the beakers that you had in the box and I crushed them all up to fine little pieces, fine little beaker pieces. And I cut up that penguin, and we're having penguin and glass grits. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Take a little spoonful of that. Go ahead. Go ahead right there. Go ahead right there. Take a little spoonful um, of that. Before right you there. do, yeah. <laughs> just remember, <clears throat> glass grits means it's, it's ground glass. <laughs> uh, has anyone seen Brother Thomas? What? Brother Thomas? 
Penguin Brothers. Has anyone seen Brother Thomas? No. no he was wandering over there behind that, uh, well, a, a snow drift. There's a million snow drifts, but uh, that one over there? Mm. I'm so worried about him. You know how he disappears. He loves to disappear, but he always comes back. But something about this one feels different. Can we please just start the book club? Oh, fine. <laughs> You're always worried about Thomas. Okay, well... Oh, if you'll open your pages. What did you think about A Hundred Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez? What? Oh, I didn't read that. I read 12 Years a Slave. <laughs> I read less than zero. Well, there are numbers in all of those titles, so. <laughs> oh, I guess there are. I read Why the Last Man. A, a graphic letter. novel. A, yeah, a graphic novel. There's a letter in that one. <laughs> I'm sure Thomas is fine. I heard this hippie one name was Thomas. <laughs> you heard what? Some people was calling that for him when I was going down there. I said, oh, yeah, that's the one I want right there, Thomas. Wait, there's there's other people out there? No penguins. Y- you heard penguins talking. I- I've actually heard that people in the bayou can talk to animals. We oh, can, penguins. baby. Skaters, we can, crawfish, baby. Stuff like that. Wow, well, do you still have to take that dump? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let me get out of here. Go take this, y'all dump. I'm starting to talk like you a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You're, you said. Well, was, where is you from, baby? Where's I from? I was from everywhere. Oh, stop it. Just kidding. I was from Louisiana also. Oh, But great. I've been up here in Antarctica so long, my accent. Sometimes I go away, sometimes I come back. I, under- I understand that. Like you sometimes you, you lose your accent yeah, when you're around yeah, people exactly. from your own town. Right. Yeah, <clears throat> kind of comes back. Yeah. Let me yeah. press it back down. <clears throat> okay, I'm good. Look, boys, here's the thing. I think you're all scientist-worthy. This is true. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is pretty strange. No, uh, can I say, Mr. Walrus? Oh, you admit it. <laughs> you got Mr. Walrus, where is everyone? I, I thought there was going to be a, v- a facility of people we'd be cooking for. Exactly. And we talked about parties, and maybe... I just feel... Where did everyone go, Mr. Walrus? Me, tree. That means him as well. I'll be honest. I sent him out on an expedition to go collect ice... And I ain't seen him since. To go collect ice. Yep. So we could do data on it. (laughs) Data on the ice? We need to do the the data on the ice. Where does this data go? It goes to the president. Of the United States? Yes. Because you think about building a military base here. But first he needs data. But the problem is I sent the research team out two months ago and they ain't come back. All right, team. All right. I know it's cold. I know there are frozen dead bodies all around you, okay? Hmm. But we're going to go in here and we're going to take this facility ghost recon style like the president said. Ooh. All right. I'm in. I'm in. Uh, do, you, do you have to have played ghost recon? In order N- to well, play yeah. Have you never played ghost recon? No, I'm like a Skyrim guy. Oh, you know I mean, I well, like worlds like that. I've you... never. How would you compare Ghost Recon, Recon and Skyrim? Is oh, that? I'll be honest. I'm more of a Pokemon kind of guy. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Okay. Maybe but, we can all just use our individual video game skills inside this thing. Okay. I'm a, I'm a 2K guy, so I'll do whatever. <laughs> NBA 2K or NBA NFL 2K. 2K? Oh, NBA 2K. I used to play NFL 2K, but the last one was 2008. So. All right. Well, let's get in there and uh, right. do this mission, huh? Guys. All right. So I'll see if I can uh, barter with them mm-hmm. right, and uh, try to buy some. Uh, Why did they send the Washington <laughs> generals down here to do this? I mean, we're not military guys. No. Why, right. why could we need a win? Me? Why do we, do we need, need a, a win? win? The Harlem Globetrotters have been beating us for a hundred years. We need a win. How do they do it every time? I don't know. Sweet silky moves. <laughs> they throw, it's the bucket thing. Yeah. I keep thinking they're gonna splash me with water. Yes, exactly. And it's confetti and every then, time. <laughs> I should be learning. I should learn. You never know when there's gonna be water in that bucket. And we That's can't true. get wet. I can't get wet. You can't get wet. We're, first of all, I wish they'd given us coats. Yes. Why do we have to be down here in our basketball <laughs> uniform? Fucking freezing cold, man. Uh, <laughs> well, I will use my skills and I will throw a black and white, black and red ball at them in an attempt to capture them. Okay. That okay. works, right? Yes. yes. Green. I mean, I probably work as good as anything else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The yeah. resignation in your voice. <laughs> well, hey, we have we have literally nothing to lose. <laughs> we're we're dying of exposure in Antarctica. We're we're one hundred percent losing record basketball team. <laughs> we only play one team, Fucking and true. we lose to them every time. Yeah, I will use my skills and 
trade Dwight Howard to the Denver Nuggets? <laughs> sounds good. Sounds, <laughs> sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good. That sounds good. All yeah. Right. I, I haven't played video games till like, since like the Pac-Man days, so I'll just go in there and bite somebody. You are the <laughs> oldest player on our team. I'm very old. You have lost to the Harlem Globetrotters <laughs> a lot of times. Yeah. Like you lost to Meadow Lark Lemon. <laughs> Yes. And yes. Cur- and Curly. You guys I, remember they used to be on Scooby Doo? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why didn't we ever get a cartoon? We never we got. Been, we could have at least been on Snagglepuss. That's right. <laughs> All right, listen, while he's taking that dump. Yeah. Can we talk for a second? Please. Please. Uh, Mr. Prudhomme. Yes, sir. Walter and I, we, of course, we defer to you as the senior chef. Oh, Metro D. D- <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, yeah. This guy seems crazy, right? Oh yes, he does seem a couple of shrimp short of a gumbo. Yeah. <laughs> and can I say something? Like his name is Mr. Walrus. Yeah. Do you think he could be a walrus? I, I think so, but I don't want to test him. <laughs> you think that's why he has that insane mustache? Yeah, it's insane. Those weird front teeth. <laughs> yeah. How his his skin seems to be like spilling, spilling over his over shirt, shirt. Collar. He and then when he went to go take very the, fat. yeah, I thought to, I was a big man, but he is he's very huge. Fat. Yeah. And then when he went to go take that dump, he sort of like left this trail of slime and water yeah. behind him. Yeah, and did you notice he was kind of walking <laughs> on his front hands? His front hands. <laughs> Wait a minute, <laughs> this guy might be. <laughs> Do you think? I know you have experience talking to animals. I but do. I do, but only cage and animals. Oh, he said he was from Louisiana. 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 Maybe he was like in a zoo or but something. But you know, for some reason, I don't believe it. But I will try when he comes back from that dead dump. Oh, here, here he goes. Oh, oh, okay, here everybody, oh. everybody act like you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Oh, 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 oh sorry, oh, we sorry. fell asleep. You were taking a nap. Yeah, so. I just took a dump. It was full of fish. What? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. All right. Well, uh, Mr. Walrus, I got a question for you. Yeah, go ahead. Shoot, shoot. Say, uh, Mr. Walrus, where did you grow up in that there, uh, Louisiana? Um, <clears throat> the, the Louisiana Zoo. The Louisiana Zoo? Oh, yeah, one of the I most... wasn't born there. Where was you born, baby? Greenland. Greenland. <laughs> Greenland. You yep. moved from Greenland all the way to Louisiana <laughs> Zoo, baby. I didn't move. I was taken. Oh. I was captured and put in a zoo. This is all kind of kind of confirming what we were. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's, not he's not even to get trying Are you, <laughs> Mr. Wal- Do- Dr. Whatever. Dr. Walrus. Are I'm you a, a walrus? Are you a walrus? Yeah, I'm okay. a walrus. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know how y'all didn't know from <laughs> looking at me right away. I don't, well, no one was we just, rude. Yeah, we know? just thought maybe you'd been at this facility for a while. Sure. There's one thing in the chef ethic code. You don't judge nobody on their parents and never call nobody a walk. <laughs> you don't do it, baby. Hey, what's... T- wait, 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 what the hell? What's this ball that just got thrown in? Is that a basketball? Is this? <laughs> it's, it's black, it's and, black red, and red. Oh, but no, it's like baby. a basketball... <laughs> Oh, oh, oh my god, the walrus is getting sucked into it! What, what the fuck? This shit is. <coughs> What's gonna happen to us? <laughs> they flew us all here, this Mr. Walrus was the only contact information we had. Wait. Now we all got to stay here on this Antarctica base. I ain't got no more ground up glass to make no more grits. Look out the window. Who is that? Is that. Is it the Washington the Generals? Generals? The Washington Generals. Take the base, boys. Here we go. Chop, 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 chop. Pikachu, I choose you. Chop, chop. Uh, uh, can't base more. I choose you. <laughs> I have these flowers to trade you for ammunition. So, uh, Mr. Cajun Agent. Uh, yeah, yeah, hello, yeah. Yeah, so I've uh, written this pretty fantastic screenplay about the Washington Generals. Okay. Uh, and they are go- they're attacking a base in Antarctica where a walrus is running things and he's hired three chefs. Okay. What do you think? Do you think there's a market for this? Well, if you make the walrus Cajun, then maybe it might work. But quite honestly... I think I'm leaving the business. Okay, Agent, why are you take? Why you? How you gonna leave the business before you even continue my meeting? You done took five phone calls since I've been here. I'm leaving the business man. because I tell you, 
Fuck Universal. <laughs> Fuck Fox. <laughs> Fuck the Hollywood systems. I don't like it anymore. Bring, bring. I'm oh. sorry to interrupt, sir, but we got a swamp on line one. <laughs> All right, put her through. Well, it's a swamp. Well, where do we go to get the water? It's just a water bowl. <laughs> Honey, I'll be home at three o'clock. <laughs> And it all happened in a place called, what was it, an Arctic <laughs> Research Station? <laughs> Something like that. Sean Destin! Yes, yes. What would you like to promote? Where can people find you? Uh, check out Wrecked on Tuesdays at 1030 on TBS. And you can watch all the episodes of Season 3 of Playing House on USA. There you and go. yeah, that's it. Where can people find you online? If um, right? At Sean Distin. You can Google me. Doing a bunch of shows at UCB. That's it. <laughs> Look, fair enough. Well That's said. It. Zeke Nicholson, same question. Hey, um, I don't know. Yeah, watch JP Bio when it airs in January, maybe. Uh, oh my god. I'm not sure. Generally, it, it's not up to me. Um, <laughs> uh, take my wife season two. I think we'll be out in November. Oh, cool. Very cool. I believe. Uh, Paul and I are in the same room together in that show. That's so right. Pretty cool. Second time is the charm. Second time's the charm. Um, <laughs> and yeah, at DJ Ziggy Zeke on Twitter and Instagram. There you go. Yo, yo. Carl! Uh, I am at Damn It Carl on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you can catch me at UCB like Sean. You can catch me uh, or watch Ghosted premiering on October 1st on Fox. Sunday night between The Simpsons and Family Guy. Personally, my favorite lineup. And, uh, yeah. Oh, we'll be in uh, Austin. We'll be in Out of Bounds, Austin, uh, at the end of August. Yeah, with oh, Marcella. Uh, Austin, it sounds like this uh, festival white women. is... Come see white women. It. Right? You got white women? Tight you got uh, Marcella's going to be there? Hey, guys, you know what to do. Ladies and gentlemen, Eben Schletter. You can find him at ebenschletter.com. He is Eben Schletter on all the platforms. Go to ebenschletter.com. Seek out Eben's non spontaneous nation work because it is wonderful. And why is it wonderful? Because Eben Schletter is only the best. If you're trying to figure out how to find Eben Schletter online, you need to know how to spell his name. And it couldn't be simpler. It goes a little something like this. <laughs> E-B-A-N-S-C-H-L-E-T-T-E-R. There you go. As for me, well, ladies and gentlemen, you know that we will be at the Detroit Improv Festival on... No, no, no. August... August something. Second weekend of August, 12th. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> 11th and 12th, maybe? Not Spontaneous Nation, but I will be there with some of our friends from Bajillion Dollar Properties. We're going to be doing an improv show, just a regular old improv show with those guys. We're calling it Bajillion Dollar Improverties. <laughs> I'm insisting that is the name. Uh, and also, I might pop up in a couple other things, but also... Check out the lineup because a lot of our friends from Spontaneous Nation will be there that weekend. That festival is great, and Detroit is great, and I'm looking forward to being back. Um, and we're going to be at the Bell House with Spontaneous Nation November 12th. Both shows are sold out. Super Ego shows are sold out the night before, but look online for standby tickets, things like that. There's always people that <laughs> think they know how to plan their lives, but don't. <laughs> and then it gets down to a couple days before the show, and they're like, boo-hoo, I fucked up. Uh, that's <laughs> that's not helpful. Thank you to Earwolf for hosting the program. Thank you to Engineer Brett for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying, Semper in presenti. This is Jess McKenna. And I'm Zach Reno. And we're the hosts of a new podcast right here at Earwolf called Off, Off Book, Book, the improvised, the improvised musical. musical podcast. Podcast. It's a podcast, but it's also an improvised musical where we get a guest and we talk to them and then Scott Passarell starts playing and then we black out for a second and when we come to, we've created a brand new musical. Yeah. People are saying it's better than the Beatles. You can say that, too. If you listen uh, to our first episode with Paul F. Tompkins or our second episode with Mary Holland, we got some great guests lined up. So, guys, rate, review, and you got to subscribe on that Apple podcast, baby. Or wherever you listen to your podcast. We'd like it so much. Just so much. This has been an Earwolf production.
production. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Chris Banner, Colin Anderson, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to earwolf.com.